Here is what sales psychologists have to say about selling to the Negro. The secret of selling to the Negro is expressed in one word. That word is recognition. Now, there's nothing unusual about that. People want to be recognized. They need recognition. That's basic in all of us. But perhaps because he's had so little of it, the Negro needs even more. He needs to feel important and appreciated. This need is a very real and important one. It shows up even in many of the Negro's shopping habits. Anyone who sells or wants to sell to the Negro customer should know about some of these habits. Three habits in particular play a big part in every sales transaction. To begin with, most Negroes buy by brand. They ask for products by name. They're quick to turn down off brands. Do you wonder why? Well, listen to what this customer is thinking. Hmm. That last hat I bought just didn't hold up at all. You see, for a long time, the Negro has been sold a lot of shoddy, second-class merchandise. So now he asks for name brands in order to make sure he gets his money's worth. Buying by brand, that's the first important Negro buying habit. Now for the second. The Negro buys good quality merchandise. Symbols of quality and prestige are very important to the Negro customer. This woman, for example, is buying fine crystal wear. But she is also buying the admiration and approval of her friends and relatives. Listen to her thoughts. My, isn't it beautiful? I can hardly wait to show it to Sally and Joan. It's a well-known fact that many Negro customers are influenced by the opinions of others. What their friends may think of a certain item often decides whether or not the sale is made. So remember, the Negro buys quality merchandise. That's the second important point. And here's the third thing to remember when selling to a Negro customer. When he specifically asks for one thing, don't try to sell him something else. Don't try to switch him at the point of sale. If you do, he'll probably react something like this. Doesn't he think I've got the money to pay for it? There's a reason for this reaction. Again, because he's had experience with cheap merchandise, the Negro resents being offered a substitute. He wants to be sold on quality, not price. The Negro buys by brand, he buys quality, and he doesn't like to be switched at point of sale. These are the keys to selling the Negro customer. Another point. The Negro family does things together, as a group. The family works as a unit. It lives as a unit, and it buys as a unit. When you sell to one member, you many times sell to all. It's also true that many places of entertainment are still closed to the Negro. So he spends more of his money for the things that are available to him, often for items that are considered luxuries. Another trait of the Negro market is the fact that it is a pre-sold market. We know that the Negro buys by brand, and he buys the brands that he knows something about. Where does the Negro buyer get this information? We know that Negro customers are turning more and more to the publications that are tailored specifically to their needs, that give them the news and the information that they want to read about. Many leading businessmen and companies already know this. That's why so many of them are taking this direct, sure route of reaching the Negro customer. The vice president of advertising of the Gruen Watch Company, for example, says this. In many important cities throughout the United States, Negroes are important customers of the credit jeweler. Therefore, it seemed that Ebony Magazine would be a very important advertising medium for us. We would say it was very well received, and from our viewpoint, a very successful campaign. From the Remington Rand Company comes this statement. Our records show that advertising in Ebony has been effective in many ways. As all good advertising should, it has built a terrific amount of goodwill and has brought a volume of sales and sales inquiries. A representative of the Allega Syrup Company makes this statement. 
Because of Alaga's regard for the influence of ebony in the Negro market, advertising space was doubled. Alaga's long experience in selling to Negroes now takes the most direct route to its best customers, reaching Ebony's two and a half million audience in every issue. And here are the statements of still other business leaders. Yes, many business leaders are discovering the most direct and most efficient way of reaching the new Negro market. Look here at the results of the same advertisement in two different publications, Ebony and another general magazine you can see that proportionately more men and women read the ad in Ebony than the one in the other magazine. And they did a better job of remembering it, too. A greater percentage of readers noted, associated, and remembered the ad in Ebony. But now, wait a minute. If the Negro market is so big and easy to reach, why aren't more companies going out after it? Well, often because of the feeling that there's something entirely different unusual about selling to the Negro. But is it really so different? What do salesmen say? The successful salesmen who do a good job of selling in Negro communities. How do you go about getting the order? How do I get the order? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't do anything. <laughs> anything different, that is. <laughs> I've been calling on these accounts long enough to know that the Negro just wants to be treated like everybody else. No matter who you're calling on, a little friendliness and courtesy help a lot. But naturally, anybody resents being patronized or talked down to. So I usually call a man Mr. Brown, Mr. Smith, or Mr. whatever his name is, until he tells me to call him by his first name. And of course, I always stick to business. I stay away from talk about race or religion or politics. That goes for talk about Negro celebrities, too. You know, this business about what good prize fighters and singers the Negroes are. Who cares? When a guy's in business, no matter what color his skin is, he's interested in making a living, in making money. That's uppermost in his mind. I guess maybe what I'm saying is that I try to help any way I can, sometimes with displays or ad materials, or an idea once in a while. The important thing is that if it helps push sales for the dealer, it helps push them for me, too. Hmm. Handle the Negro account just like any of your others. Don't patronize. Stick to business. Get interested in the account. Pitch in and help any way you can. Sounds like pretty good sales advice. That's the secret of selling the Negro. Well, how about it? What do you think of this new market? It can open new outlets for you and for everybody who sells goods or services. It's still possible to get in on the ground floor when this market is just beginning to grow and to expand. The facts and the figures that we see here are just a small sample of what they promise to be next year and the years after that. Yes, here are men and women with money to spend. And they spend it for exactly the same things as you and I and everyone else. They buy almost every type of product and service that you have to offer. And they can be reached like everyone else through publications that appeal to their interests and desires. That deliver the kind of loyal readership that can be proved both in surveys and in down-to-earth sales. Here is a ready-made market waiting to be asked to buy. 